Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're looking at the three needs theory, which is also known as the needs theory of motivation. So why is three needs theory useful? Well, let's imagine that you're a manager giving a team member their annual performance appraisal. Now, this team member has performed exceptionally well this year. So you want to reward them by allowing them to take the lead on a high risk project one that has potentially great upside for the organization, but also for them. Now, this new project will be their reward for performing so well the previous year. But when you tell them this, they don't seem all that positive. So why might this be? Well, one reason is that you may have misread their motives. Now, while they might want to achieve great things in their career, Maybe they don't want to take on a high risk project for fear it could damage their career prospects should they fail, or maybe they simply prefer being part of a great team and don't like taking center stage. Now, in this example, using three needs theory would have been useful because with it, you could have understood the motives of your team member in advance of the appraisal. So you could have rewarded them in a way that would actually motivate them. So let's examine each of the three needs in turn. But before we do, it's worth noting that each of these needs exists on a sliding scale with most people being somewhere in the middle of the scale. So for example, while some people may desire power, not everyone wants to be powerful at all costs. Similarly, while some people avoid the spotlight at all costs, most people enjoy a little praise. Most people don't exist at the extremes of each need. So in a nutshell, each individual will be motiv motivated to a greater or lesser extent by each of the three needs. So the first need is the need for achievement. Now, someone with a need for achievement would be motivated by achievement and the opportunity for promotion They'd have a strong desire to complete complex tasks, set records, or do something not done before. They prefer it when the results are under their control and based on their effort rather than external factors or external forces. They like to receive regular feedback and they like to avoid high risk and low risk situations. And that's because low risk, low risk situations offer no sense of, chi of achievement but high risk situations are too much outside of their control. Now, team members with very, very low achievement needs tend to avoid situations where they can fail. And conversely, people with really high or actually too high of an achievement need will want to win at any cost and will want to receive all of the praise. Now, the second need is the need for affiliation. And someone with a need for affiliation would be motivated by achieving and retaining acceptance as part of the group. They like to be liked. They follow the social norms of an organization for fear of rejection. They enjoy collaboration, but dislike competitive situations. And they avoid high risk and low risk situations. Now, team members with a very low or too low affiliation needs tend to be loners, often introverts with very little desire to socialize at work. And conversely, people with too high an affiliation need will demand blind loyalty and be intolerant of disagreement. And the final need is the need for power. Now, someone with a need for power would want to be in charge of others. They enjoy winning and competition. They place a high value on discipline and they enjoy having status and motivating others. Now, team members with a very low power need tend to be subordinate and dependent. And conversely, people with a very high power needs can be rude, they can exaggerate their own abilities, and they can want to control absolutely everything. So how do we use the model? Well, we can use it to help us get the most out of each team member. And you can do this by changing the way you give feedback, the way you set goals, and the way you interact with each of your team members. Now, it's important to realize that when we change our approach to best suit each team member, we're not trying to coerce them in any way to do what we want. Rather, we're trying to create a win-win situation. And that means that your team members' needs are being fulfilled, so they win. 
But as a result of that, they're motivated to do their best to deliver for you. And that means you win. Now, there's just two steps to using the model. And the first step is to determine needs. And you can use a simple table to understand the needs of each team member. So for each need in the table, all you need to do is score each team member from minus five to plus five, where plus five indicates a very strong need and minus five would be a very strong aversion. Now to help you complete this table, you can think about the actions and behavior you've seen your team members show in the past. So you can ask yourself things like, do they seek praise? Do they push to achieve deadlines? Do they like to be in charge? Are they introverted or are they extroverted? Do they enjoy being part of a team? Now, if you're brand new in your position and to your job, or you simply just don't know your team that well, you could get them to score themselves for each of the three needs. And the second step is determine how you will adjust your st style. Now, step two is simple. Now that you understand the needs of each of your team members, you simply need to determine how you're going to adjust your approach with each of them. And you can use this table as a reminder of how to approach each member of your team at a future date. Now, remember to update the table from time to time as new insights about your team members come to light. Now, in summary, need theory of motivation or three needs theory provides a mechanism for team leaders and managers to understand what motivates each of their team members. Now, once you're armed with this information, managers can adjust how they interact with each team member to ensure they're get, getting the most out of them. And using three needs theory to create motivated team members creates a win-win both for the team member and for the manager. So that's it for this lesson. Really hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon.